Here is an example, and this example two is tucked in between two other examples. But I'm going to put a star here indicating this is something that is so fundamental in statistics that it is something that is worth memorizing. So in this case, x1 up to xn are going to be mutually independent and identically distributed random variables with finite mean mu and finite variance sigma squared for i equals 1 to n. The sample mean is x bar is equal to 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of x sub i. Now this sample mean is a fundamentally different creature from the population mean mu in the following respect. The population mean mu is a fixed constant. The sample mean x bar is a random variable and the reason it is a random variable is it is a function of n other random variables so it varies from one sample to the next. For example, if you calculate the average height say of n people that are in your probability class and then you go to another section of that probability class and you calculate the average of their heights you will probably wind up with two different x bars. They are random variables so they differ from sample to sample. So the goal in this question is to find the population mean and the population uh, uh, variance of x bar. That is to find the expected value of x bar and find the variance of x bar. Well, starting out with the expected value of x bar, x bar is defined to be 1 over n times the sum of the x sub i's. And this 1 over n is a constant. It is not a random variable. And you know that constants can come out front of the expected value operator. And now we're left with the expected value of a sum. Well, you know the expected value of a sum is the sum of the expected values all the time. Now, even though we have them mutually independent here, it would work even if they were dependent random variables. So this is 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of the expected value of x sub i. The expected value of x sub i is given right here. Each one of them has expected value mu. So this is like adding up mu n times. And that is n times mu. And the n's cancel and you get mu. So the expected value of the sample mean is the population mean. And statisticians have a special way of writing that. And the way they would write that is they would say that the sample mean, which in this case is given by uppercase x bar, is an unbiased. And that is something that I'm not defining carefully here. But if you take a statistics class after this one, you will get the uh, definition of what is known as an unbiased estimator. It is an unbiased estimator of the population mean mu. And in some sense, being an unbiased estimator is to say that it is on target. Its expected value is mu. It is shooting at the appropriate target. So whenever you calculate a sample mean, it is a good estimator in terms of being on target of the population mean. Now the second part of this problem is to find the variance of x bar. So in this case, the variance of x bar and this derivation will kind of run in a very parallel fashion to what we did up here. This will be the variance of and write the definition of the sample mean, that's the sum from i equals 1 to n of x sub i. And in this particular case, this 1 over n is a constant. And you know constants come out front squared, out front of the variance operator. And we're left with the variance of a sum. 
Well, since these are IID random variables, since they're mutually independent, that variance of the sum can be written as the sum of the variances. So this is the sum of the variance of x sub i. So the 1 over n squared persists. The variance of each one of these values is sigma squared. And so we are adding up sigma squared n times. And that turns out to be n times sigma squared. Notice that the n and one of the n's in the denominator cancel. And you get sigma squared divided by n. So the variance of x bar is sigma squared divided by n. Notice that, not surprisingly, as you get a larger sample size, the variance of the sample mean comes down. So not only is it on target at mu, but its variance decreases as you collect more and more um, values. Statisticians would use the following words to describe this. If you take the square root of this value, you get the standard deviation of x bar. And they would call that the standard error. That is a term that is used quite often. The standard error of x bar is the standard deviation of x bar, which we just derived to be sigma squared over n.